There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is... Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behaviour, the Earth's Most Wanted action figure video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. Guys, the Thunderbolts, Marvel's most wanted team of nefarious ne'er-do-wells turned semi-decent human beings. The Thunderbolts have been around since the late 90s and they've always been a bit of a cult favorite for Marvel readers. And now it looks like we're very, very, very slowly eking towards seeing the Thunderbolts in the MCU. The pieces on the chessboard are slowly being moved into place and it's an exciting time. So I wanted to do a Thunderbolts team building exercise. And this is a fun one because this is one that's actually not the classic Thunderbolts because we don't have all of those yet. And I've done the Red Hulk Thunderbolt, so go back in the archives to check out that one. But I want to do the Luke Cage Thunderbolts. So quite simply, Let's do it! So first up, guys, we have, boom, Luke Cage himself, Power Man. Now this story takes place, or this sort of uh, arc, because it's, it's long. I was going to kind of recount the whole story, but then I went back onto Marvel Unlimited to reread it, and I was like, wow, this, this goes for a long time. So <laughs> this is the Cliff's Notes. After the Siege storyline, so after the whole Dark Reign era when Norman Osborn was in charge and the bad guys were ruling the roost, we get the heroic age. Captain America and all the good guys, we take over and it's bright, shining, happy and new and Captain America wants to relaunch the Thunderbolts and do it as a rehabilitation type program for criminals and yeah, basically the bad folks to try and do good and he appoints Luke Cage as the leader of the team and he tasks him with recruiting his own batch of Thunderbolts and this Luke Cage is actually from one of the most sought after Marvel Legends sets that you just cannot find for love nor money these days that's a legitimate grail the Thunderbolts box set because they made a whole box set of the Luke Cage Thunderbolts it's pretty good still holds up and the there's a couple of figures from that that are the real gems. The main one, I would say, oh, there's two. I'd say they're on equal pegging. There's Ghost. So the Iron Man villain Ghost who can make himself intangible. Uh, they gender swapped Ghost in the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. You've got the female Ghost who looked really cool, actually. I hope that we see her in the Thunderbolts movie. But more specifically, it was the male version of the Ghost who was you know, an industrial saboteur, but unfortunately they haven't re-released him. He's only available in that box set and holy moly, he goes for a pretty penny. And also they have Moonstone in that box set as well. And yeah, same story. She goes for a lot of money. I'm sure we're going to get another Moonstone in the classic Thunderbolts design coming up in the next couple of years. They're releasing that team slowly but surely. But in the meantime, unfortunately, I ain't got those figures. But I do have Luke Cage. And he looks terrific on the big, thick, chunky buck. I think this is the Hyperion buck, which some people don't like. They think the proportions are a little bit out of whack. I'm down for it. I think it's really cool. And this design, this kind of costume design, I think is a perfect melding of the slightly campy, old-school Luke Cage design with the pop collar and the chest and the tiara. They've kind of taken those elements and just put them on a more modern kind of look. So instead, he's just got a bright yellow shirt. And then rather than jeans and boots, which he normally kind of wears nowadays, he looks a bit, to my tastes, Luke Cage is a bit too real now. I like to have a bit of comic booky sort of style. So he's got kind of like the silver kind of guards on the top of his boots there. And it just looks like a little melding of the real with the fantastical. And that's really cool. But more importantly, the face sculpt, I think, is terrific. I think it's really captured the sort of badass kind of look of Luke Cage. And what's kind of funny, someone pointed out, it's the same essential body and even the same head as Radioactive Man, who will be popping up a little bit later. And I thought it was just kind of cute that it's such a unique kind of repaint. You would never really tell unless you really, really look at them that this is essentially the same action figure. So Luke Cage is tasked with assembling his own Thunderbolts team. So a sensible thing to do if you're making a team full of criminals is to make sure that it's not entirely full of criminals. Otherwise, you might be a little bit outnumbered. So the first person he recruits is... Ha! 
Songbird, the absolute staple, the heart and soul, I would dare say, of the Thunderbolts. There, right from the start, she was there when they were full-on evil villains, pretending that they were heroes with a nefarious plan to take over the world. And she was like the first one to turn. She was the first one to go, you know what? There's a lot to be said for actually not being a dick, which is good advice for everyone, really. So Songbird has always been a staple member of the Thunderbolts and kind of became the conscience of the team, really. So Luke Cage em employs her as his kind of liaison, go-to, right-hand person, and that's a great use for her. This figure, I think it's still lacking quite, quite a bit. It feels like it was a bit of a quickly thrown together one because her harness here is a very basic kind of design. Her original head was ugly as sin, which is why I have a cuckoo head on here that I just threw some white paint on. I think it works pretty well. But at least her Phoenix style hard light pink projection, that looks gorgeous. So I think they could have done a lot better with her but at the same time, this is decent. In the Luke Cage Thunderbolts, she's got more of a pixie kind of haircut, kind of a funky punk kind of thing. Here we've got more of a classic sort of songbird, long hair type look, but still, as a standalone figure with some changes made, I changed the hands as well. Because unfortunately, like a lot of flying characters, she had flipper hands and I had no time for that. So with a couple of little changes, I really like what I've done here. <laughs> if I say so myself, toss toss. And adding on a little bit of extra moral support, as in like, you know, as opposed to amoral support, we have Mac 1. Although by this point, I think he's Mac 10. There have been a lot of Mac versions until we get to the one that we appear in the Luke Cage Thunderbolts. But this is the classic Mac 1 figure here. I don't think we're going to see any more because he's not exactly a a-list character who's going to get multiple iterations. This figure was actually the first single figure review that I did and I really gave out about it because I wasn't happy with how much reuse was there, how cheap a lot of it was, because I think it's a real shame that he is so often drawn with the eyes visible in the lenses and they could have done a clear lens with the eye underneath if they wanted to apply a bit more money to it, a bit more time and effort, but they were like, Nah, it's good. It's only Mac 1. Who cares? Well, I cared. But at least this has grown on me slightly. But still, the white feels very white and plastic. It, it doesn't feel like there's much sort of depth or detail to it. So that's kind of a shame. But still, he is growing on me slightly. And he had flipper hands as well. Damn flipper hands. So I think he's got Speed Demon's fist hands at the moment, and that works pretty well. But he goes with Songbird and Luke Cage, and they are sort of the moral center of this new Thunderbolts team. But now we bring on some of the other ones, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. So, on the recommendation of Professor Charles Xavier, they bring in... Let me untangle him from my cord here. The Juggernaut! Ah, any excuse to bring out the Juggernaut voice. Juggernaut is always kind of morally jumping back and forth, but this run in the Thunderbolts I thought was so great at showing his heart and his softer side, and actually there are some wonderful moral kind of choices and some real heartbreaking moments actually. And Juggernaut here, he's genuinely trying to make amends and do good. He's in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody, so you know, he's not a free man, but Professor X has vouched for him, which is a nice side and angle to Professor X as well, where he's like, well, my stepbrother did kind of make my life a misery for the longest time, but at the same time, I want to sort of do good and be the bigger man. <laughs> Maybe it's just Chuck going like, oh yes, I'm the bigger man. It's like, oh, you dick. <laughs> but Juggernaut is there as the powerhouse of the team. And that's kind of cool. I love having a big brute bruiser on a team. He goes really, really well with them. Now, of course, as, as I said, I don't have Ghost or Moonstone, which is a real shame. Moonstone was brought onto the team despite Songbird's massive protests against it. And that was a fun dynamic because Songbird has been with the Thunderbolts with Moonstone from the start. And she knows, like, no, <laughs> she's going to try and manipulate and destroy us. Like, trust me. And they're all saying, nah, it'll be fine. It wasn't fine. But then, also, rounding out the team, we have, and this is a fun angle they took, we have, I shouldn't have the cable on the table, it just makes life so difficult, <laughs> Crossbones. Now, Crossbones, I've mentioned this figure before, he's wearing the nuke jacket and he's got the bandolier, makes the figure so much cooler. But Crossbones was an odd choice for the Thunderbolts because he's kind of unrepentant. He's a stone-cold, died-in-the-wall, Captain America-attempted-murdering Nazi. 
He's not a good guy, so rehabilitation is not really an option, and he's not going to play well with others either. He's like, do you believe in the superiority of the Aryan race? No? Nope. Well, we're not going to get along then. I don't know why I was, I don't know what that accent was, but still. Actually, where is Crossbones from? Is, is he, is he American? He's Brock Rumlow, isn't he? A name like Brock Rumlow, I think that must be American. Brock is the most American name I can ever think of. Except for maybe Chad. Brock and Chad. Anyway, I digress. Also, I'm not saying Brock and Chads are like Crossbones type people. I'm sure there are lovely Brocks and Chads. Except maybe Brock Lesnar. He could genuinely- Oh, Brock Lesnar playing Crossbones? Yeah, I, I would take that. But anyway. This Crossbones, the whole reason they put him on the team was actually to convince people to gravitate towards Luke Cage. They put him on the team knowing he was going to be a problem and he was going to try and draw, drive a wedge between everyone. So they were like, great, by putting him on the team, everyone will think, this guy sucks, let's at least support Luke Cage. So it was a very clever, very canny way of doing things. And then finally, rounding out this initial version of the Luke Cage Thunderbolts, we have... Man thing. And I always thought this was such a weird fit. You know, it's a bunch of mercenaries and criminals and people trying to make right, and then this mythical swamp monster. And it's like, one of these things is not like the other. But it was kind of fun. Man thing, they sort of, you know, just make more of a creature, just sort of acting on instinct and understanding. It wasn't like Man thing was like, hey, you guys, yeah, I'm gonna come along and join the Thunderbolts. Yeah, why not? Gonna go bust some heads. Turns into Taz, apparently. But they just have him there, and he is their mode of transportation. Man thing can teleport, as well as burning all those who fear the man thing's touch, or whatever that phrase is. But yeah, he just teleports the team wherever they need to go. And he is kind of a moral guardian as well. Because he is such a powerful character, he does kind of play sort of the... He's kind of like the Omega Supreme of the Thunderbolts. Kind of like there to make sure that nothing gets too far out of line. I really like man thing, and he fits the dynamic of the team very, very well. But that's just the start. As the story progresses, th this is a long story as well. We go up and down and all over the place. There's also another character that they recruit into the Thunderbolts, Santa Santana. <laughs> they recruit Carlos Santana into the Thunderbolts just for some musical accompaniment. No, Satana. Satana featuring Rob Thomas from Matchbox 20. She's obviously all mystical and hell powers and all that kind of thing. And again, she was another character in the box set, which I ain't gonna see. I'm just waiting for all the re-releases of all these different characters. But Satana's in there as well. And eventually, the team suffers a few losses, they take a few hits. Of course, Crossbones is quickly ousted. Like, once he's convinced everyone that Luke Cage is the person to follow because he's a horrible human being, they're like, okay, well, we need to get you off the team before you actually do try and murder everyone. But then, the government, because this is all government work now, they decide, right, okay, the Thunderbolts have taken a few hits, we need to kind of, like, back up our chances here. So we're going to create a beta team, which I really love the nickname of the Underbolts. So there's the Thunderbolts and the Underbolts, two kind of synchronized kind of teams. And on the Underbolts, we get a few new recruits. I believe it is headed up still by Songbird and Mark 10. If it is Mark 10, whatever number he's on. Either way, by this point, his suit is like a tank. It looks kind of like the Crimson Dynamo bath big hulking kind of mech suit. I'd love to see it, but it might be a little bit too obscure. Then again, I say that, we are getting the armadillo, so all bets are off. But joining the Underbolts is the other big time figure for this group, Mr. Hyde. And if you were ever wondering, like, why did they go for this Mr. Hyde design? I don't know if they were Thunderbolt fans, but this is exactly what Mr. Hyde looks like in the Thunderbolts, even right to the bowler hat type design. Not the top hat, but the bowler. This was what one particular artist decided, this is Mr. Hyde, this is the staple look, and then Hasbro were like, yeah, we'll go for that. So if you want a good place to put Mr. Hyde, in the Luke Cage Thunderbolts is an absolutely perfect, perfect fit for him. And I think it works great because he's such a cool, badass looking builder figure. I'm really, really happy with this guy. A different head and different hands would have been a nice addition, but it seems we don't really get those so much anymore. But this guy just standing alone as he is, so, so cool. And then there's a couple of other members to the team, and this is where the Thunderbolt starts to really expand into multiple villains coming and going in kind of a rotating door. It's funny, I brought out Luke, 
because I was like, yeah, he was he was on the Luke Cage team. No, he wasn't actually. But I remembered distinctly. I was like, why do I remember him being in those comics? And actually, he was on the Norman Osborn Thunderbolts. And since I've got him here, I might as well go, hey, look, it's Luke, because this figure's so good. Hasbro did not need to go so ham on this figure, but they did. With the flak jacket, with two different heads, with his gun, which whose name I can't remember. But Nuke's super cool. I remember he's in like a stasis chamber when the first Luke Cage iteration of the Thunderbolt starts because he was all messed up previously. So he does kind of appear, but only for a short moment. But yeah, Nuke's awesome. He's going in the display regardless because he still fits that kind of Thunderbolts era. But then, yes, we get the extra people recruited, such as Boomerang, as you can tell, as you can denote from the little Thunderbolts logo there. Boomerang is such a fun character. I've come to love him in the new Spider-Man series because he's just, he's not evil. He's just a criminal, <laughs> you know? He wants to make money and pull off schemes and heists, but he's not an evil human being. He doesn't want to torture and dominate the world. He just wants to earn a quick buck. So he's really fun. And we basically get a first glimpse of a proto-superior foes of Spider-Man, because we also have the Shocker as well. And of course, this Shocker also is denoted by his Thunderbolts logo there too. There are variants that do and don't have them. Of course, we're all waiting for a classic shocker. But in the meantime, this one is great with the blast effects as well. This is very much a modern shocker design. To a blink and you miss it kind of person, you couldn't really tell the difference between this and the old school shocker, but the real fans, you know. And we'll be very happy when we do get a classic shocker. Also, this is where my memory gets a little fudged. I think we did get Speed Demon too, almost rounding out that superior foes of Spider-Man. But like I say, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because characters come and go and jump in and out. And it's like, wait, 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 who was on the team? Because there was one piece of art a while ago, well, many years ago, actually, someone drew a poster for like all the Thunderbolts members, all the members who have ever been a Thunderbolt. And it was like, wow, that is quite the revolving door. So I'm pretty sure Speed Demon did turn up there. And then finally, oh, I forgot to mention, there's one figure that we'll probably never get, and that is Gunner or Guna. It was one of the early Luke Cage Thunderbolt stories. They have to go and fight these trolls. I think these Asgardian trolls are causing trouble somewhere. And while they're fighting them, and I think they, they kill them, which they weren't supposed to. That's what happens when you hire villains to do this kind of work. They find a little girl, a human girl, who was raised by trolls. I think she's human. Well, she must be super strong. Either way, like a little troll girl who they bring into the team as well. And she's kind of cute. I remember her biting Thor on the hand and he's like, geez, what the hell? But yeah, uh, Guna or Gunna, she was a sweet, uh, sweet character, but I don't think we would ever see her in Marvel Legends form. And finally, I, it's funny, I think I remember seeing Blizzard. I, I, in my head, I'm like, no, he was one of the rotating guys. Although then, maybe he wasn't, maybe I'm imagining it. But regardless, I got him off the shelf, so you know what? He's going in the team. And finally, this was also my chronology mixing up. I thought, yeah. Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, he was on that era of teams as well, wasn't he? Actually, not so much. He does lead a version of the Thunderbolts, but that actually happens way after the Luke Cage version. But I still have him in that team because it's my kind of Thunderbolts sort of shelf, essentially. So he's almost like, like a bookend. If we have Luke Cage starting this era, that the Luke Cage era goes into the Red Hulk era. And then the Red Hulk era goes into the Bucky Barnes era. So he doesn't really fit. But again, this is a great figure. It's so cool. I just took him off the shelf for this video. And you know what? He's going in the team as well. And guys, that is the Luke Cage Thunderbolts team building exercise. Bit of a mismatch because I've got to admit, I wanted to do this video for a long time and a lot of people were asking for it. But then when I went to read all the comics, I was like, oh my good lord, there is a lot here. So that was a big time cliff notes, throw in together and see what we get. But yes, the main Luke Cage Thunderbolts are Luke Cage, Songbird, Mac One, Crossbones, uh, Man Thing, uh, you know the rest, and of course Ghost and um, Moonstone, who we still need to get reissues for. If we do, I'll be a very happy chappy. So guys, thank you very much for watching that team building episode. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, then join the 6-1 Clicks! 
by clicking the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And also, guys, if you want to go one step further to support the channel, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash displaying model behavior, throw a few shekels my way, and watch some of the exclusive videos. And also, I'm running my own personal Thunderbolts program. So if you are a hardened criminal with a horrible criminal record, if you sign up to Patreon, then that will actually count towards your rehabilitation. You can take that back to the courts and go like, look, I've served five years under Patreon. I think I deserve some special treatment. And I think legally, they have to do that. So that's something to bear in mind as well. So guys, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I did the hand thing early. Keep displaying. I'm completely out of whack now. And let me, let me try that. How do I do it? And until next time, keep displaying. Wow, once I kind of go off kilter, once I'm out of sequence, I have no idea what's happening anymore. Keep displaying model behavior. Choose.